Come on. Spending too much time on social? Is your daily screen time over two hours? Are you a little bit overweight? Not saving enough money? Any or all of these are familiar. Strive could be for you. The Strive two-week online boot camp will help you to detox your mind, body, and money, getting you on your way to a happier, healthier, wealthier, and more confident life. Go to strivedetox.com, S-T-R-I-V-E-D-E-T-O-X.com, and get your mind, body, and money right. Judy, are you ready? I am ready. Excellent. I'm ready. The people are ready. Let's go. Welcome to Money Savage Engage. This is George Grumbacher. Judy Ryan is the CEO of LifeWork Systems. She's a culture transformation specialist, a consultant, a trainer, an author, a returning guest on the Money Savage podcast. Excited to have you back on. Judy, tell us a little bit about your personal life, some more about your work, and why you do what you do. Well, first of all, George, I just want to thank you for having me back. It's been good to get to know you in between these podcasts also. Yeah. <clears throat> I am the um, the owner of a company for since 2002, so we're in our 18th year. And I've actually been doing this work since the mid-80s and, you know, and doing it full-time since 1998. So it's a, it's a passion of mine. I don't seem to be di- – that doesn't seem to be dimming. <laughs> so, And I actually believe right now with everything that's going on, it's time has come because it's all about how do we have human systems where people can actually create conditions and conversations where they love their lives. And I know a lot of people aren't loving their life right now, but I think it's it's an opportunity for them to grow in that. Yeah, certainly appreciate that. So we are recording this on Friday, the tw- Friday, Friday, March the twentieth. So just to give people level setting on everything that that's 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 going on. So. So how, um, talking about human systems where people can thrive, um, how, (laughs) I don't even know how to go about sort of jumping into that conversation right now because it's so dynamic. So many people are working from home, so there's needing to, I, I guess, be new boundaries or new habits if there's other family around and then also working virtually. So there's probably a lot of, unique challenges and opportunities for is it still interpersonal communication if it's a skype call well it's actually interpersonal between people like a skype call even a skype call but also interpersonal within people Hmm. and you know human systems is a big category and this time is only one uh, area where it's very evident that it's time to interrupt some patterns, <clears throat> some patterns of how we see ourselves, some patterns of how we see one another. And one of the things that um, I just want to mention is that our work is based on the work of Alfred Adler, and he was a psychologist during the time of Freud and Jung. And there was a book about him last year called The Courage to be Disliked. And the two Japanese authors said in the foreword of their book that Alfred Adler was at least 100 years ahead of his time. And to me, that was so validating because I've been saying that since the mid-80s. And really what is so important is that he was breaking down the power structures that have always been. And that's why I don't think people were ready for him until perhaps right now. And so um, I know you and I kind of talked a little bit about the topic today. Alfred Adler is one this is one of his major um you know focuses and which was task ownership hope i didn't just jump in there too quickly on that george but so really one of the things that's happening right now with the pandemic is that people if they have not been managing themselves or their relationships or their mood or their motivation or their engagement level with life it's really, they're going to really be caught off guard. Uh, So one of the things that we teach in our work is what's called task ownership. And, And task ownership is simply when we become accountable to recognize what we're doing, recognize what's ours to do, and make sure that we're choosing all of those behaviors and all of those choices that allow us to have a fulfilling life. 
<clears throat> and contribute in meaningful ways to the larger community. So sounds kind of simple, doesn't it? Like, you know, sure. you've got tasks, I've got tasks, but sometimes we don't actually have a clear idea of some of the things that should be our tasks and not our tasks. So um, I know you kind of asked a little bit about this topic. Do you want me to answer any particular questions you have on that or yeah, I, know, I think uh, I think um, it's I, it it does on one hand seem like a pretty obvious thing. What what is it that I'm doing? What what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? Um, what what is within my purview? What is not? Um, is that in fact you are working with companies all the time and individuals? There's there's a disconnect there. Yeah, well, most of the time in a company, people are thinking, oh, I have the role of manager, so I'm supposed to manage people, or I'm supposed to motivate them, or I'm supposed to kind of shame them or praise them into being what I want them to be doing, or I'm supposed to kind of overcompensate for things and give a lot to them in hopes that they give a lot back. And and that's the opposite of task ownership. Hmm. <clears throat> task ownership is when uh, people look around and see what's going on in their own life and they pick up what's theirs to pick up. But they also, in leadership, know how to transfer responsibility to other people. So, George, I don't know if this is okay or not, but I'll, I'll tell you a story that I tell a lot that is a good example of transferring responsibility to someone. Perfect. Would that be okay? Yeah, please. Okay. So, um, there is this story, and this is a real story. I was working with some schools, and there was this one particular school where there was one teacher in the whole building who was using our model, which is a, a responsibility-based model where the primary uh, responsibility of the leader is to transfer responsibility to people. So she was this one little group within her, her school. And so she had invited me in to sort of help to continue to teach her how to do that. And it happened to be on a day when they had a classroom meeting. And this was a group of eighth graders, so they're about 13, 14 years old. And she, uh, when I came into the classroom meeting, a, a boy came up to the teacher and said, I have something I want to add to the agenda for this classroom meeting. And she said, okay. So when it came around to his turn, what he said was, I'm being bullied by my homeroom teacher. Oh, no. And he said that the school, the school had brought in this pledge, kind of like the Pledge of Allegiance, only it was a pledge where you put your hand on your heart and you say, I pledge to use my words and actions for peace. And he said, what really bothers me is that the homeroom teacher pointed her finger at us real angry and said, if you don't do this pledge, you're going to get a detention. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, George, but isn't that kind of a little uh, self-defeating? Right. <clears throat> so his contention was, I'm being bullied and that's not right and I need help with this, you know. So the teacher looked at me like, okay, please show me what transfer of responsibility looks like in this. So I, I asked him, I said, first of all, do you even know what you want around peace? Like, do you want peace? And he said, well, yeah, I do. And I said, okay, um, do you want peace with that teacher? And he said, yeah, I do. And I said, well, great, because I can help you then. Because one of the things we don't do with each other is own our own tasks. So one of my tasks in my life is to create a world where people love their lives. And I know if he'd say, I just want to take the teacher down, I would say, I'm not your person to help you with that. Right. And even that would have been an education for him. So I was able to say, great, you know, you know what you want here and I'm happy to help you. Now, are you willing to see where you're doing war with this teacher? And his reaction was so funny because he's like me, how am I the one doing war? She's the one who's bullying me. Right. And I said, you know, I happen to agree with you. And, um, and to me, that's neither here nor there because you're the one saying I want help with this. And you're the one in the room willing to do the work and to choose peace. So are you willing to look at where you're doing more? And he said, I guess, you know, it's a little reluctant, but he was willing. <clears throat> and I said, um, do you ever say bad things about her behind her back? And he says, well, yeah, I hate her. And I said, huh. <laughs> you can tell where I'm going. Huh. You know, anything about gossip and hate that's warlike to you? And, you know, and he says, I guess, you know. And I said, do you ever try to go to her? and talk to her about how you're feeling about things because you have a very reasonable point here and you know what if you went to her and he said well we're all afraid of her 
And I said, ah, I said, did you know that being afraid of people is a way that we're in attack to them? And he's like, what? And I said, um, if a dog comes rushing up at you, barking and growling and baring its teeth, if you get more afraid, will that dog get more hostile or less hostile? And he said, well, more hostile. And I said, you're right, but why? And he said, I don't know. And I said, well, that's probably because nobody's told you, but <clears throat> the reason that that dog gets more hostile is as you come at something with fear, you've already got them in the enemy camp. You've already got them in the monster box. And they're going to feel that you've got them in that place where you, you, you know, have low faith in them and that you have to protect. So you've got that fighting stance, whether you're aware of it or not. And they're going to respond accordingly. And so you probably didn't know it, but as you were afraid of this teacher, you are in war mode. You are in attack mode. And he goes, well, gosh, you know, I, I never thought of it that way. And I said, well, isn't it great you know that? So now what do you want to do? And he said, well, now I want to go to her, but I don't even have, know how to begin, you know? And I said, well, isn't that great that you have a teacher who has set it up, that you have, you know, 20 classmates and time set aside to work through things like this. And what was really cool was that um, several of the other classmates said to him, well, I'll practice with you and I'll go with you because I've been doing more with that teacher too. Nice. And, and that's what happens when you transfer responsibility. So if you notice, I asked questions, what do you want? Do you want peace? Do you want peace with that teacher? Are you willing to look at where you're doing more? Did you know that being afraid is a tech? You know, like Socratic is transfer of responsibility. So that's why we have a saying now, uh, one of our customers kind of helped us with this. I thought it was so cute. It's the uh, phrase slam, say less, ask more. Hmm. When you're transferring responsibility to someone, you say, uh, you know, what do you, sh what should you be doing right now? Or how are you going to take care of that thing that's yours? You know, instead of just lecturing and nagging and all the things we do. So what was kind of powerful about that for me was not only did the kids raise their responsibility sort of as a collective, but even that teacher came to me and said, you know, you can tell how much I care about these kids and what kind of teacher I am, but I'm actually uh, ready to go and work for you in school reform we were doing a lot of projects at that time and she said because I'm, I'm tired of walking around the school and seeing all these values on the hallways and it would be like saying math is crucial reading is everything and never having a math or reading class <laughs> and we, we can teach these kids math or reading but if we don't get them this information they're not going to really be able to function well in the world so that's it's just interesting to me. when you transfer responsibility everybody picks it up a little more yeah, yeah. There's no question about it. That's that's a a, a wonderful uh, a wonderful illustration of of task ownership. And I was looking at it way too uh, probably granular of thinking about uh, like just tasks, like whatever it might be, doing reports or whatever. Not owning what my responsibility is in interactions. Right. It's, it's, it is owning our tasks that are maybe, you know, our, our cleaning jobs in, in the household or something. Sure. But it's also bigger tasks like, um, am I able to manage my relationships? Am I able to manage my own engagement in life and my own happiness? Am I able to manage a plan for my life where I'm actually focusing on what is it that I want to create in the world? Am I um, even responsible for my productivity if something's a barrier in my life. So those are things I can't even begin to tell you, George, that sometimes I talk to people that are in their 50s and 60s. And when I say, you know, it's your responsibility to be aligned with what you feel and what you want, they're not even used to asking themselves, what do I feel and what do I want? Yeah. Yeah, that, that, that's such a powerful thing. I've been, what's been on my radar for probably the last year are these ideas of affirmations and I am statements, saying that, you know, mm -hmm. I, I am the greatest husband in the world, whatever, versus asking myself an am I question, because I guess you need to start with that. Well, you want to say I am this great husband because that's your vision. Right. But you also want to say, what is the story of that? Because, you know, everybody might have a different story around what it means to be a great husband or a great wife. So uh, part of it is that personal responsibility to say, I'm here for my own um, 
clear path. Because if we tune in, we are, we're all here for our, our own path. And if we um, listen to beyond the affirmation to, well, what does that mean for me? And what's the, so what of that? So if, if you came to me and said, I want to, I want, I've decided I'm going to be the best husband ever. I would say, well, what behaviors do you f- use that help you stay in what feels like best husband? And what visions do you have for being best husband? And so that would be a, um, hey, you know, because I'm a best husband, um, my wife and I, I have all of these wonderful experiences together and we're able to communicate effectively and we're able to um, raise our kids in a unified front and we're great with money and, you know, whatever that story is, that's where you start putting the rubber to the road. So that's, I think, that, that that essentially answers the question I wanted to ask of if you are in an organization where it's just one teacher in a school who's who's learning these skills, um, how how do I go about it as just as an individual, uh, making sure that, that, that I'm essentially owning my own tasks? So it's not necessarily, I'm not saying less and asking more of others, I'm, I'm doing that of myself. Right. The more that you're willing to learn and grow. So that teacher is a great example of somebody that said in their own life, I'm, I'm stumbling onto something here that feels like it would be helpful to my students. And I'm going to do it no matter whether anyone else is doing it around me or not. I mean, right there was her task ownership, yeah. her willingness to have courage in the face of um, it's unconventional what I'm doing. I'm helping empower these kids when most people are just using the traditional control models. Like, like that's what is so ironic. That teacher in the morning was using a command and control approach for a peace pledge. Do it or else. Right. You know, and that's that's common in our workplaces too. People bring in, oh, I got this great idea, the peace pledge. Let me slam it over your head with a hammer. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so that's you know that's why everywhere, whether it's as a parent or as a you know a leader in a company, or even if you don't have the title leader, like look at how that eighth grader became the leader in the situation. Yeah. Because if I had said to him what would have commonly been said, like, well, you're right, she's wrong, and what kind of a teacher is she, and we need to go report her and all that, guess what I would have been saying to him? You have no power. You're a victim. Poor you. Yeah. You know, and and that's not going to help him grow into a strong person in the world. No doubt about it. I love it. I think that that, 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 that makes a lot of sense to me. Well, Judy, Savage Nation is ready for your difference-making tip. What do you have for them? Okay. Um, I, you know, I think the most important tip that I would ask people to consider is um, really checking in with themselves. What am I feeling and what do I want? And, and that may not be something that is answered in one answer. So let's say you get mad at somebody and you say, well, what am I feeling? What do I want? Well, I'm furious. And what I want is to strangle them. Well, that would be your first (laughs) truth, right? (laughs) But then you might go the next level. Well, what am I feeling now? Well, I'm feeling relief that I just admitted how enraged I am. And now what I want is I want to figure out how to go to to them and, and, you know, work this out with them. Or I want to figure out how to separate myself from them because they're just not a good person for me to be in contact with, you know, whatever it is. And so sometimes, Taking responsibility for ourselves means going through where you ask questions of yourself and then you consider all the possible positive or negative consequences. And then you ask until all of a sudden what happens is something kind of clicks in and we know it's the answer for us, but it, but we can't rush to it. We have to spend a little time with it. So that would be my biggest tip. I see people in their 50s and 60s that still say, oh, my God, I don't even know. Nobody's ever taught me to do that. And so hopefully uh, that's what you're looking yeah, for. Yeah, no, I think that, that is great stuff. It definitely gets, come on. Come on. What am I feeling? What What do I want? I think if we mm-hmm. can take a little step back and ask ourselves that question, um, what what a difference that could make, not only in the in the actual circumstance, but, but, but long-term as well. So I think that's very powerful. Absolutely. When, when we don't ask it, we're almost guaranteed to be irresponsible. I remember uh, a guy on a date one time, and I asked him, just out of curiosity, why don't you wear your safety belt? And his reaction was, I'm not letting the government control me. Uh-oh. And, and I said, the government's <laughs> not even in the car with us, you know. But he was, 
he wasn't even sitting with what am I feeling and what do I want? Really, what do I want? He was just already in this knee jerk thing that he had held on to for years, never reexamined. Here he's a divorcee with kids that he could end up going through the window of a car all to prove he's not going to be controlled. Like, probably not thinking through the consequences of that, right? <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> yeah. <I think> that's <laughs> that told awesome. me lots about him. Oh, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. Well, Judy, thank you so much for coming back on. Tell us where Savage Nation can learn more about you and, 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 and get connected. Well, I would love it if people would come to my website, um, www.lifeworksystems.com. It's life work singular systems plural dot com and we've got a podcast we've got over 200 published articles we've got all kinds of things videos on almost every page i would really love to get to know people if you feel interested in what you're reading or seeing or hearing i'd really like to connect with you more directly so um thanks for asking me that george yeah Savage Nation, if you enjoyed this as much as I did, show Judy your appreciation and share today's show with a friend who also appreciates good ideas, go to lifeworksystems.com. Check out all the great content that Judy has on the site and all the great resources as well. Thank you again, Judy. Thank you, George. Talk soon. Yeah, and until next time, keep fighting the good fight because we are all in this together.